Thank you for uh, joining us today. I'm thrilled to be here, Peter. Now, you're a specialist in uh, inter-team collaboration in, uh, in, in corporate organizations, and I specialize in collaboration specifically towards um, sales and marketing. Where do you see the parallels in those two regions? Well, I, I think there's, you know, I have a considerable background in both sales and marketing, coincidentally, and so from a leadership standpoint, I know how to drive sales performance. I know what motivates top salespeople. I know how to elevate people from sort of modest levels of productivity to much higher levels of productivity in a very positive, supportive, developmental way. Yes. And the parallel in terms of sales and marketing is that very often, those people are pitted together, and they almost do it for themselves. They do it as, oh, marketing, you know, here's another stupid idea for marketing, or here's, you know, these salespeople, they never understand what we're doing, or they never think through what they're trying to deliver, and so there's, there's really a lack of cohesiveness where, I mean, it's fundamentally stupid to have internal teams competing against each other. Right? You know, there's a there's an old Indian saying that American Indian saying that says no tree has branches, you know, unwise enough to compete against themselves, right? I mean, why would you do that? Yes. And so I think it really comes down to successful partnering where the sales and marketing people perceive themselves to be one team, that they're that you integrate the salespeople in your in your planning, you integrate your salespeople in the Here's what we're seeing from a customer standpoint, and then you pitch them and get their ideas. It's not to say that you can't go forward with what you believe to be best, but when you give your salespeople voice and they feel that they're being heard, the likelihood of them supporting the rollout of any campaign, any efforts, is going to be much more seamless. And so you've got advocates from the get-go. And so it's really bringing people together and making them feel that their success is not just predicated on the success of the other group, but really enveloped in it. So you don't want marketing to fail. You don't want sales to fail from both perspectives. Each team has to be looking at the other one and saying, that's my brother. And this is what we miss too often in business. It's this internal competition that destroys collaboration and ultimately undermines productivity. And, and, and what do you think is the, the root cause of it? I mean, why do we even have a sales team and a sales department and a marketing department that, you know, often sit in, in diff different parts of the building and different parts of the country? So you've got, traditionally, you've got marketing and head office clumping together and you've got the salespeople distributed around the countryside. What, how did we get to this point? Why, why does this situation even exist? Well, because... Here's my belief that in business, we think competition is the way to drive performance. And what we mistake is that we're not competing against, uh, we, we forget that we're competing against outside entities, outside businesses, right? That's a real competitor. And so we structure our evaluations on how people compete with each other within their very own organization, which is just completely flawed and antiquated and nevertheless something that's pervasive in business today. And so what you get is people putting up walls. Only in business do we think that we need to be competing against where the defense goes, oh, their offense, they're no good, you know, they're not scoring it. I mean, why would you do that? Right? Yeah, that's I mean, right. If you did that, the coach would get you off the team so fast because they need everyone together. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the term team, that like, just says it all, you know, and, and, and as you know, my book's called The One Team Method because we want them to work together as one team. And, and I, I actually think that um, having them in separate um, operational silos like the marketing silo and the sales silo and the two shall never meet, it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's just asking for failure from, right from the start. So the, um, the, the term that I support is, is uh, smarketing, you know, where sales and marketing actually work together as one team. And, and from the outside, at least, you know, they're indistinguishable. You know? And, and uh, in my LinkedIn group, one lady gave me a great line. She said, uh, sales and marketing should be like two ends of the same banana. Yeah. They exactly. Like exactly. Joined in the middle, but right. they each knowing what, what, what their jobs are and doing it together. It's a great image. Right. And it's and it's realistic, right? Yeah. I mean i just think it's completely crazy any longer to be thinking that we need to be creating internal competition. It's just it has proved consistently to be a failed strategy. 
and people end up leaving when they find out that the person sitting next to them is their enemy and they have to compete against them because we're not wired to do that. We're wired for cooperation well, well, as human beings. Well, well, also, you know, if you're a high-performing individual, you want to work in an organization where you're being supported and, and you have a great chance of success. When there's, you know, and and, and if, if, if you're the high-performing individual, you can choose, do I want to work for an organization where there's finger pointing or do I want to work for an organization where I'm being supported? And, and you have that choice, right? And, and so right. um, absolutely a collaborative environment attracts higher caliber of talent to the organization and that, that lifts the entire organization up just by itself. It's, it's an often overlooked fact. This is human nature. Yeah. And this is what we need to foster in organizations. Well, we, we want to be engaged and, and males in particular, we, we, we love it when you ask our opinion, opinion because it validates us, you know? And, and, and as, as we were talking before, if, if you engage people, then they become part of the solution and they, they, they stop being part of the problem. And, and so, there's this, so there's this whole notion of, you know, top down and the boss knows best and here's what you're going to do. And uh, if you don't do it, we're going to cut the workforce, you know, whatever it is. It's, it's just crazy because uh, management by fear and, and competition is, is, is not really as, as successful as working together in a team and, and sorting things out. And uh, I love that slogan that, uh, you know, play together. Oh, that's fantastic. So simple, you know. Uh, and and the other thing that, that I advocate is that the the, the marketing people should uh, do ride-alongs with the salespeople. Um, and and I, and I tell you what, more often than not, both parties benefit because the the sales guy can show the marketing guy the the objections and the challenges that he ha even has to even get the appointment, whatever it is. And the, and often the, the the sales guy is pretty impressed with the, the the big picture knowledge that the marketing guy brings to the conversation. You know, when they say, "Mr. CEO, oh, did you realize these are the trends in the in the in the, uh, um, in the economy at the moment?" And here's how we're, we're addressing them and, and stuff like that. The sales guy often doesn't have that that breadth of uh, of insight. They they more focus on their products and how can they solve particular problems. Um, but but the often the marketing guy can put it into a bigger context, and together they actually make a great team. To, to convey the, the company's message much, much more effectively. So, so ride-alongs are a great idea. Uh, again, it's, it's involving the people, getting them engaged and helping them to be part of the solution. You know? and, and, and often what I find, and, and you probably find the same, Mark, is that the, the less outspoken people often have the best ideas. They just don't feel yeah. empowered to ask, to, to, to say, right? They, they wait to be asked, nobody ever asks them, so they don't say. But then, but when you give them the opportunity, they actually step up and they say, "Well, have you ever thought of this?" And everybody goes, "No." <laughs> like, what you? I know. Well, you know, there's a great book by Susan Cain, who you know, about, called "Quiet" about introverts. Yeah. And uh, you know, I learned from the from the head our the agency that we were using was the same one that Honda Motors has used since they started selling cars in America in 1972. So you've got a 40 plus year history. Right. And the right. person who was our representative to that company has been with them almost as long. So he's got deep tenure in that organization. And one of the things that I learned from him is what you just pointed out. He wouldn't let people sit in that room for two or three hours and not contribute just because they were quiet. Yeah, you know, most people value being asked and and you might just uncover some nugget of gold you didn't even know existed in the organization, right? Absolutely. Right. Right. And, I mean, always go to the lowest common denominator because I got fantastic ideas. And by the way, they can save you from a problem too. So you've got this idea and you're thinking, okay, this is the campaign, this is what we want to do, and then you take it out to the to the field, to whomever is going to that's going to be the face of this. Yeah. So it's kind of what we're thinking. What do you think? Well, if you do this, do you realize that that's going to do this? Or do you see that our competitors are doing this and then how that's going to backfire? And you're like, oh, man, no. And they can save you is the point. They can save you from a disaster. So it's, it's not just the salespeople, but it's anybody who's impacted. You've got to get their feedback on this. You want to do the due diligence, not just to give them voice and not just to sort of validate because everybody wants to be heard, but to make sure that you've thought through everything. Yeah, so many yeah. times people come up with these marketing ideas and they don't anticipate the downside and it backfires. On yeah, so you don't get blindsided by something you're not, you're not aware of. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, so, let, so let's summarize. We said, you know, play as a team, mm -hmm. step into each other's shoes. So, so you can actually live the other side and see that the grass is not greener, right? Very good. 
uh, and that there's there challenges there. Ask the meek people their opinion and let everybody be part of the Sincerely. solution. Sincerely, yes. Sincerely, that yeah. has to be done authentically, right? Good point, good point, Mike. And let people be part of the solution by empowering them to speak out and, uh, and having a say. And top down, you know, encouragement from the CEO for, you know, for these organizations to collaborate, cooperate and yeah. to see each other as one team, not two. So, so um, top down, it's going to be a top down initiative insofar as the CEO is going to be aware of it and he or she has got to make sure that it actually happens. They don't necessarily have to be, you know, physically in the room, but if everybody's got to know that this is an important thing and, and, and it's got to be sincere, as you say, Mark. I think, you know, CEOs just communicate to people over and over. You know, they say you have to hear something seven or eight times before it really sinks in and alters your behavior. So CEOs making that a priority and saying collaboration and cooperation is one of our key values, fostering the support of our peers, making sure that one another is helped out when they need it. This is our key value. You keep repeating that, you're going to get that behavior. A perfect example of that is Quicken Loans. Uh, they have this, you know, if you have a problem, you're the solver. You're not the, oh, well, you need to call this, or right. you call, you yeah. pick the problem, you got it, you got the hot potato, you hold the hot potato until it's solved. Yeah. And so that really fosters a tremendous amount of mutual support because everybody's been there. Everybody's been on that side. So right. the way to solve it is to go, hey, Peter, I've got your customer over here and I want to help you out. I own it. It's my hot potato, but just tell me what's going on so I can solve it. They don't go, Peter, it's your hot potato. Goodbye. That's a very <laughs> good <different> luck. <laughs> building. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, this customer of yours is really upset. And I'm handing him off to you. Goodbye. Yeah. They don't do that. And so everybody owns the problem. So if you own the problems and you keep seeing the problems, then you're going to say, hey, how do we get this thing solved so I don't keep getting this hot potato? It's a very different mentality, and it works really, really well. Very high-performing company. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. Thanks for your time today and for your contributions. It was fascinating talking with you. This was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. And uh, from you know, United States to Australia, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All the best.